Yeah, I know it's going to be interesting. Skill. Like, just where do you start? Like, there's always, I mean, you could start kind of anywhere. It's yeah. Just making sure that pattern is so oriented. Fortunately, correctly. the drawing does have a hint. The drawing does have one of those hexes located. And so that is the, the big hint on this, on this design. You want to look and see where that. So it's been a lot of fun watching Sebastian and Gray battle it out here in the semifinal matchup. And we've got the perfect model for their final battle. It is the hex hot pad. It's a really common question we see in 3D CAD. What's the best way to create a hex pattern like this? And we've added this model to the website, tootalltoby.com. In our library of 2D to 3D CAD challenges, you can scroll down to the bottom and you can try to challenge yourself to model up this part. So be sure to visit us at tootalltoby.com. And of course, let us know down in the comments what you thought about this battle, what you thought about the semifinal matchup, and what you think about this model. That way they have something to talk about. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, guys. Well, here we go. The Wheel of Fate is ready to speak. Let's let this thing talk. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. And it looks like we are going to see. Oh, it clicked over to the last oh. second. <laughs> wow, yep. wow, wow. And wow, wow, wow. <laughs> oh, boy, Corey. <laughs> Just the yeah. way we wanted this thing to go. <laughs> this is that last second click over, guys. When you see what happens, you're gonna you're gonna be thankful for that last second click over. Okay. Challenge number 18 accepted. Good luck to both of our runners. This is the finals of the semifinal. Unless they get stuck, in which case we will go one more. Corey, what has been your favorite part about these matches today? I think it's just it's they're very i mean i feel like we came into this tournament and you know you know sometimes certain seeds you know we, we watch march madness and there's upsets and there's this i feel like everybody's pretty ranked fairly similar right like i know gray blew me out of the water last week but everybody else this week has been fairly on the same uh level and it's it's cool to see like literally clicks behind each other and you know a couple of a couple of more seconds and some of these people would have came out on top and so. yes this is the plug to buy a solid box. That'll push you a little further in. Yeah. <laughs> buy a solid box. Do the do yep. your practice models. Uh, guys, if you want to be in the world championship, I think this is this is fantastic demonstration of of the cal you know, we're every year we're increasing the caliber of our competitors. And so I can't wait to see what happens what happens next in these tournaments. But before we can get to the future, we have to get through this matchup. Guys, Sebastian has one point. Gray has one point. Whoever earns this point, and I do mean earns, whoever earns this point is going to move on to the finals. Are you ready, Corey? I'm ready. <laughs> Are you ready in the chat? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I need that, I need that sound bite. The soundboard, yeah. Guys, this next CAD battle to determine who goes on to the finals between Sebastian, our number three seed, using Katia from Germany, and Gray, our number two seed, using SolidWorks from Russia, begins in three, two, one, go! What is the mass of this part in XXX.X grams? Tolerance is plus or minus 0 0.3 grams. It's called Hex Hot Pad. It's made from ABS. It's in millimeters. Both of our runners are grabbing a screen capture. Both of our runners are jumping into their CAD. We got Gray on the right using SolidWorks, sketching a rectangle looking down from the top. We got Sebastian on the left using Katia, sketching a rectangle looking down from the top. Gray is going to extrude. And when Gray goes to extrude, he's going to be drawing first blood here. He's just looking for the measurement. Sebastian looking to include that circle in the first sketch. Interesting approach. Matab in the chat saying, wait, wasn't this part in Discord? Yes, there was a discussion in Discord about how to create a hex pattern. And so we definitely, I see Jern in the chat, Jern regular in Discord, recognizing the hex pattern discussion. Guys, who is going to get this thing modeled up first? You will probably at some point in your CAD career be asked a question about how to drop a hex pattern onto a model. And uh, it's not easy, that's for sure. We did it uh, when I was in high school, actually. I tried doing it and I did the old fashioned way, copy and paste in hexagons because there wasn't really a, uh, a pattern tool and it was a 2D CAD, but we were trying to make a skateboard out of metal and that was going to be your grip. So you wouldn't have any grip tape on it. All the hexes would fall out and that's how you would skate on it. And then I thought about, well, if I fall, 
and my ankle gets hit by a piece of metal. We probably shouldn't do this. So we scrapped the project <laughs> and we didn't move on. Further. <laughs> well, this is absolutely fantastic. Wow, wow, wow. Matab says that circular bit has a purpose, maybe just for hanging it. If it's a, if mm -hmm. this is a kitchen hot pad, then that That's might be thinking, like a hanging on the hands or whatever. Yep. Fabrico asking where you can join the Discord. You can if you visit twotalltoby.com, the Discord link is on there on the practice models page. Fabrico. Yeah, Fab I know it's gonna Fabricio. be interesting. Like, just where do you start? Like, there's always. I mean, you could start kind of anywhere. It's yeah. just making sure that pattern is. So oriented fortunately, correctly. the drawing does have a hint. The drawing does mm -hmm. have one of those hexes located. And so that is the, the big hint on this on this design. You want to look and see where that first hex is located. And that's definitely going to help you get the pattern correct. But I think the other part of the challenge is just like getting your extrusions in place with the correct wall thickness, getting the pattern in the correct direction with the correct gap. I mean, that's where doing a hex pattern like this really gets difficult, but mm -hmm. Yeah, you definitely want to look at that drawing and uh, uh, get that first hex located. Gray, I know I know both Gray and Sebastian are, are English as a second language, so uh, just make sure that they know to look at the drawing and get that first hex located in the correct location, and that will make all the difference. Mm -hmm. And so we see Sebastian here. Interesting approach here. Looks like he's almost uh -huh. doing a Boolean-type approach with those hexes. We've got our wall thickness of four millimeters as kind of the default wall thickness. And then we've got our ribs here uh, for the hexes with two millimeters. So. Well, it looks like Gray's getting tripped up, lost some of his geometry for a second, but he yeah. brought it back. So. <laughs> yeah, it comes down to the whole like sketch pattern, uh, you know, sketch pattern, feature pattern. This is, this is considered a tier five model, uh, FPV Kev. Uh, remember, the models are based on, or the tier level is based on complexity, not necessarily difficulty. Difficulty is kind of subjective, where mm -hmm. complexity is a little bit easier to measure. Uh, so co for, from a com complexity point of view, you don't actually need that many features to create this shape. However, yeah. from a difficulty level, well, that's a, that's a totally different story. And look at Gray getting that yep. pattern in place. Wow. Gray, well done getting that pattern in place. And now you see he's using his dimensions to locate based on where that uh, where that foundational hex was. But wow, decided to do it with a sketch pattern. I would not have done that with a sketch pattern. I would totally have done that a different way. But there we go. Yeah. I am not in this tournament and Gray is. And look at him getting that hex shape in place. And wow, wow, wow. Yeah, I think sketch pattern would have been the way I went to. I don't know a different way to do it. That's kind of how I've learned. <laughs> so, well, I think that what we're seeing here on Gray's screen is that he did it with sketch pattern, and now he's maybe running into some issues. SolidWorks is kind of fighting him. Um, I think uh -huh. that th that's where you know that's where we tend to run into some issues with sketch pattern is when we try to get into features when we have overly complicated sketch patterns. But wow, guys, if you're enjoying there this battle, go. be sure to hit that like button. We got 191 people watching. I think when people realized that it was this hex pattern, a bunch of people let their friends know to tune in. And yeah. wow, wow, wow. Guys, we might be seeing an answer here coming in here from we Gray. Go. We're going to watch the chat. We're looking for the answer in xxx.x grams, and Gray comes in with an answer. 180.8 grams. And Corey, we have ourselves a SolidWorks vs. SolidWorks yeah. final battle. That is correct, Gray. 180.8 is the correct answer. And wow, 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 what a comeback. Sebastian won that first match. Gray was able to come back and win the next two. And congratulations to Gray for moving on to the finals. Those were some truly tricky models that the Wheel of Fate delivered there. It was that one little click, just barely going from model number 20 to model number 18.